Hey there, everybody, and thank you for visiting Ad Shot. Let's get this done. Come on. Should be done yesterday. What are we gonna do? Gotta get this done. Gotta get it done. We've got to get this done. Get it done. Can we get it done? All right, today we're gonna talk some more about my Lego room office. Get the angle, get it done. Welcome back. We have a show for you today. A lot's gonna get done today. Today I'm working on the upper walls and there's a lot of angles to be cut on these studs. I wanna make sure that I can build this properly. It's gonna be supported properly so that the sheetrock can be held up and everything looks good. This is gonna be part of my feature wall so I wanna make sure that everything is done right. No mistakes. Everything is cut very closely and everything is very snug. That is uh, definitely my goal here. If this is your first time or you are returning, I sure appreciate you showing up today. This is going to be a fun ride. I'm going to show you how I'm going to, by myself, put these walls together and use the vice clamps as necessary uh, to secure my piece in place while I affix it to the metal beams and C channels. And basically we're just putting in a wall that will hold sheetrock, possibly a few shelves, but as long as it is secure, it is not a load bearing wall or anything that is holding up the building. So this is going to be for the sheetrock again and for insulation. And as you can see, the walls kind of go in and out all the time. So there is air leakage that's coming in from the exterior of the building that I need to address. And then it goes behind this bubble wrap insulation, which I'm going to leave in. So I'm going to take care of some of the exterior issues in time. I will seal off every little spot where the air is kind of sneaking underneath. Uh, I do have the foam pads for this metal building, so there just are little holes everywhere and it tends to uh, inflate in and out. So I'm going to try and reduce that as much as possible. So doing the angle cuts for all of these came out really well. I pretty much was nailed it all in the head with measurements and I was really good about my cuts. I didn't waste hardly any lumber. This was really a good option. I decided to go over here above the garage because it was somewhat in the view and why stop right there at the bathroom. So I did do all three sections. I'm very happy with how this turned out right now. Remember, if you know anyone who would like this content, feel free to share this video. All right. Had a real good day. Got the walls up over here. Well, the triangle part over here and another small triangle part up by the mountain of boxes. Now I only have to do this upper wall. And I did the triangle piece over there. And those were quite tricky. I was glad to get those in. Let's get this done. Let's move quicker, quickly. You can do this. Today we're going up. We have to do this whole upper section. Okay, this is only gonna mainly house sheetrock up here. It's not gonna be any type of load bearing wall at all. Uh, just more to create more of that sheetrock look. Uh, the big, beautiful ceilings here. So I'm gonna get on it. I'm gonna do this little about three to three and a half foot wall. And then I'll tie it into the upper channel up there. Just make sure that the wall is straight and that the wall is not wobbly at all. We wanna make sure this is very tight. We're gonna pin it up against the white insulation on the ceiling with long 16 foot two by fours and 12 foot two by fours. And so I have to go all the way down. This is a big 40 foot run here. Uh, it's gonna be quite a challenge and I'm doing it alone. So let's see how I'm going to uh, suspend all these and keep them from falling while I'm working on them. I think it's gonna work out though. All right, here we go. Oh my, let's get this done. Come on, should be done yesterday. What are we gonna do? Gotta get this done. Gotta get it done. We've got to get this done. Get it done. Can you get it done? And I am absolutely trying to get it done. Get it done as fast as I can. So let's take another look at this time lapse. I'm gonna start working on this upper wall and I'm gonna pu push up tight against the ceiling and then basically run the same stud pattern all the way across. So I think it's gonna be strong enough to hold my sheetrock, strong enough to be a good solid wall that I can put shelves on. That's the real focus here. So I'm gonna do these tie backs back to the C channel with screws and very precise holes. It's gonna be held hey, strong. Yeah, I got this uh, 12 foot section put in. 
very nice, super secure. Very happy with how this is turning out. I'm gonna put in another 12 foot section. Got my header uh, just balancing right there. And then I'll finish up with the remaining about 15, 16 feet. So this is going to be very excellent when I am finished with this. And that's most of the framing done. I'm very happy. All right, more to come. Now is the time to join me. Join me. All right, let's move forward on this next section. You can see that one side of the upper two by four is being held up by a, another stud and I'm just gonna work my way across and I'm going to tie into the C channel behind it when necessary. And it is very strong as I go. I'm constantly checking for plumb and consistency with the wall below it. And here I'm gonna put in this giant 16 foot piece and this upper piece had a little bit of warping to it, so I had to definitely use a little bit of stress and finagling to that upper piece to make sure it ran consistent across the top. So I'm glad that did work out for me. It usually does. Another fine day. I don't know how to spice this up uh, a little bit, but I have to. I have to put a little bit more into this project before moving forward with the sheetrock. I think since I'm going this far, I am going to have to go to the opposite side here and do the stud framing for the rest of the garage. So I think that is definitely going to be the plan. It's going to require a whole bunch of moving of things. Everything that's up here, some of these racks are like tied in behind the support wires. Those are all going to have to come out. Uh, all this is gonna have to like merge into the middle so that I can work on the walls. And I think what I'll do is I will order all the lumber, all the insulation, and anything I need to get this wrapped up and finished. And uh, I should be good. So there's gonna be a lot more framing, I think, before sheetrock, which push it, pushes this project out. I wish I had this thing done yesterday but it is not, and so I need to definitely make this happen and do it right. So doing it right means completing the garage, not just what I have here, which is well more than half the garage. I am going to complete the walls on this garage. So that will definitely move forward, and I will have plenty to show for this. Here's my thing, I have to move all this stuff into the middle. So I'm set to move a whole bunch of stuff, move and or organize the storage crisis. It's just crazy. Now is the time, join me. We must do this. All right, more to come. So as you can imagine, most remodels and other projects require a whole bunch of moving things. So, uh, this seems to be a constant theme. All right, on this fine day, I am going to put in a wall. And this small, not freestanding, but this small wall will just be right here. Just a little two by four wall, right here at the bottom. Go all the way up, about eight feet or so. Eight feet. What that wall will do will provide more support for the cabinets. It will also have uh, electrical, like a plug up here at the top. And then that plug will allow to service maybe a lighting scenario that might be up here on top of the cabinets. And then also I could uh, curl over and have lighting shining down on the brick wall and all those thousands of drawers. So there'll be maybe some kind of lighting that comes up over the end and shine straight down so I have really good views at what's inside those drawers and uh, just a good work environment back there. I do have these really bright lights on the ceiling, but they don't accommodate the back side of these cabinets as well as I want to, so that's why I'm gonna put in the electrical outlet. And so this will be easy. This will just be a small wall. I will anchor it to the floor. I'll use the ram set and get that thing set right here with same with the sill plate. So I have some lumber left over right now, so I'm gonna get that done today. So, here we go. All right, I got the sill plate cut. It's in place. 
I have about a half inch buffer right there that will accommodate sheetrock. And uh, then I'll have these doors just sticking out past the sheetrock a little bit. I think it'll look good. So that's how I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna now use these pins here and I'll use the ram set and I'll fire this sill plate into the ground. So the ram set's been a savior of mine. I really like using it. It's really fun. It, you know, it adds a little spice into things and uh, it's firing off that 22 shell inside this mechanism and it is plowing that pin right into the floor. And yes, it does look like a nail, but I call it a pin. And that thing is holding this piece of wood very snug, very happy with how this is turning out. So I got this little wall in now, very strong. Put in an extra two by four in the middle because this possibly may have a beam someday across the top. But I am all done with this wall. As you can see, the sill plate's in. This wall will be great. It actually will kind of catch some of this incoming debris that seems to come in the garage here. And this will just kind of blow down straight in instead of it always used to wrap around and go into the corner there. So now I'll be able to more easily sweep or clean this area. I'm kind of happy with that. So the wall's in. So uh, now I think the next project will get crazy. I'm imagining everything from here on out. We'll just get crazier and crazier. Let me know what you think in the comments below. There's more to come. Please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.